our feet all over this house? How many expecting God to do something amazing in your life tonight? Amen.
Somebody, is he working for you? He's working right now. Amen. He's working now. Right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to know that even when you lay down at night and go to sleep, that God's not asleep. While you're, while you're laying down at night, he's still working. When you get up in the morning, he's still working. When you go to work, he's still working. When you come home, he's working. He never stops. Amen. Praise the Lord. He never slumbers and he never sleeps. He's always working. And that's comforting to know. Good to see you tonight on this lovely Sunday night. What a beautiful day. What a great day we've had today. The presence of the Lord in this house this morning. Wonderful. Amen. God spoke to our hearts. I believe he done some work in some lives. And I believe that tonight uh, he is going to continue working in our lives. Amen doing great things and but we're so glad that each and every one of you are here amen just good to see everybody and uh if if maybe you're joining us tonight here and and uh this is could be your first time ever being with us at milligan uh welcome we're glad you're with us amen and uh we just love to worship the lord and uh just enjoy being in his presence and god always seems to amaze us how he shows up and what he does, amen. But we're so glad to see all of you tonight. I want to just bring one thing to you here to pray about. Brother Sean Anzalone gave me uh, a prayer request. His daughter, Lainey, has been diagnosed with the flu type B. And uh, would you lift Lainey's name up tonight as we pray and ask the Lord to touch her and, uh, and, and heal her body of this flu. A lot of people sick with the flu, so not only Lainey, but won't you just ask the Lord to touch all of these that have been uh, affected by this flu that's going around. It's just been a, a tough year uh, so far with this thing. and and uh, But our God is, is uh, greater than the flu. Amen. He's bigger than the flu. Amen. I'm telling you, my God is, 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 is a healer. is the only healer. And uh, he will heal the flu. I believe that. Amen. 
Doesn't matter what it is, God is big enough. His power is great enough. And whatever your need is tonight, you say, well, I ain't got the flu. I got something else. Well, I'm going to tell you, he'll work in that too. Amen. Doesn't matter what it is. If it's finances, if it's flu, if it's uh, uh, whatever it might be, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ask or think tonight. So I want to ask you to go with us to the Lord in prayer. And let's ask him to move in this house tonight and what he desires to do. But you call Lainey's name out and ask the Lord to touch her. Father, we thank you tonight for bringing us, Lord, again together in the house of the Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord, that we feel tonight. Lord, we felt you today. But thank you, Lord, that your presence is real tonight in this house. And Father, we just ask that you move in this place. God, that you work in the hearts and the lives of your people that are in this building. And God, that you do great and mighty things. We believe you for that tonight. And so, Lord, as we come to you, we lift up Laney tonight. We ask you, God, to touch her body. God, that you just drive this flu right out of her system. And God, that she be made whole tonight. In the name of Jesus, we ask. And not only her, but all those, God, that have been affected by this flu. We ask you, Lord, God, to bring healing. God, to bring your power. God, and to move. And we thank you tonight, God, that you're able to do that. And God, you are willing. And we just love you and we bless you for what you're about to do in this place tonight. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Now, would you give the Lord a great, I mean a great big hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all, y'all are pretty good at, at praising God and worshiping God. Amen. You don't, have to, you don't have to cheerlead this group very much. They just get in there and go with it. Amen. We're going to fellowship a little bit, so won't you step out of your chair and just go around and love on somebody a little bit. Let them know that you love them.
tonight. Let's remember Sister Wanda Batson. She is very sick and she is very pregnant and we need God to be with her. And also Sister Jackie Bumgardner. Let's remember her. A whole bunch of sick folks, the Booker family. Um, and uh, it's good to see Brother Burkhalter uh, with us tonight. They were with us this morning, but he hasn't been feeling well. Uh, good to see, uh, it was good to see um, Sister Bolin here this morning. I didn't get to see her, but someone told me she was here. It was good to see her here. Let's continue to remember Brother Jerry Madden, Brother and Sister Gordon. Sister Gordon was with us this morning, but let's, she's here tonight. Amen. Let's continue to remember them. Also, our Sister Cox, pray for them. Continue to remember Brother and Sister Cutchins, Brother Cutchins and Sister Cutchins. Brother Cutchins is here tonight. Continue to remember him, that God would minister to him and meet some need. He's still got a blockage in there, but he told me a while ago, we're believing God to melt that thing, and uh, it just go away. Amen. And uh, uh, 
but let's just continue to remember them and believe that God's going to touch them in a very, very special way. How many of you love to worship God in your giving tonight? You love Him enough to give to Him. And uh, if you would just stand all over the building. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for the grace that there is in you. We thank you for the power of God that's so real. And we ask you tonight to move on the multiple fronts. God, we ask you to touch. Father, you see all the sick, Lord. They're just many of them, even the brother's daughter that was in the emergency room with this morning. Just remember her, meet her need. Move God, minister to every need that's represented inside this house. God, we don't pray to a God that's dead, but God, we pray to one that's very much alive. And tonight, Lord, we ask you to move. Take charge of this service. Have your way in it, Lord. And Father, we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouted, amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. So 
that you just met Jesus and from then it's just been joy unspeakable Brother Dexter and full of glory Hallelujah Amen If you enjoyed our family tonight if you have just let them know it Hallelujah So good to see you in the house of God tonight We're glad that you're here and we welcome you in the name of Jesus our service tonight is going to be a little different, and uh, uh, that's really not unusual, uh, but um, our formatting is going to be a little different, and um, I want you to just kind of grab your Bibles for a second, and... Um, I want you to turn with it, me, if you would, to the book of John, chapter number 2. And um, this afternoon, I started writing some things down to share with you tonight, and I just, I was getting dates mixed up and getting years mixed up and everything else, so I just quit trying, and so tonight, I'm just going to. Let the Lord bring back to my memory that that he needs to bring back. But I want you to turn to book of John, and if you would, just stand as we read this precious word. And this is, this is what the King James says. Begin reading at verse number one. It said, in the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine or unfermented juice. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what, I ha what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. And his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That is such a lesson for the church. Whatever the Lord says, just do it. Just do it. But he said, Whatever he saith unto you, do it. And there was set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three fortunes apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. They filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it to him. 
When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, that it was a made wine, and knew not whence it was or where it came from, but the servants which drew the water knew. They knew they drew water. They did not draw wine. And the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine unto now. Or in other words, most of the time they would drink what was at the bottom where all the settlements would go. But this wine was so good that they said, we know this is the best wine. You saved it just for us. How many of you understand when God does something, he does it well? The beginning... This beginning, verse number 11, of miracles that Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee and manifest his glory and his disciples believed on him. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. And I ask you to come and I ask you to move through the spirit of remembrance, through the spirit of testimony. Move tonight. Encourage us tonight, Lord. And Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said, amen. You may be seated. The account that Pastor just read to you was the first miracle that Jesus ever did. When I dissect the Word of God and I begin to look for particular things like miracles or miracle, single or plural, I found out that only 27 times between the lids of your Bible will you hear the word miracles, only 27. You will hear the word miracle only 10. From the cover to cover, a total of about 37 times in your word, it, it mentions the word miracle or miracles. When you look at the life of Christ, you will look at it and understand that his life, as great as it was, was orchestrated by divine prophecy. Elijah, Isaiah, Nehemiah, Jeremiah. Scripture says, for unto us a child is born and a son is given. For the Brian, it speaks of the fact that the government shall be upon his shoulders. It says that he's our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting father, our prince of peace. It speaks of things that are set in prophecy that must become a reality in the future. And the Bible tells us of Christ and it says that that many would not believe on him. Even in his own hometown, there would be many that would not believe on him because they knew that he was the son of Joseph and Mary, a carpenter. Yet, he proclaimed himself to be the Messiah, the Son of God. In the claiming of that, he not only did he claim it, with much power and much glory, but it was a divine fact because the Bible said, for unto us a son would be given, unto us a child was, would be born. And it said that upon him would rest all the cornerstone of the prophets and the prophets. And it spoke of it him being the Savior of the world, and he would be the vicar of the church. I hate to tell this to my Catholic brethren, but the Pope is not the vicar of the church. Jesus Christ is. And the ministry of Jesus was hindered to a certain degree because of prophecy. Things had to happen and things had to to not to happen because of prophecy. The other day I was watching a television thing. I was going through the channels and I looked at it and one of the inscriptions on the channel headings was 
video on demand. We have Dish Network, and it was video on demand. I, I didn't realize we had so many things. I just figured we had Fox News. Amen, my lady. But the Lord got to speaking to me through that, and I stood there into a blank space and just looked at the channel's guide, and it said, Video on Demand. And I got to thinking, I believe it was through the Spirit of God, and I got to thinking about the religious world we live in, and I got to thinking about we're, we're living almost like in the world of church on demand. We, we want it, uh, hopefully not here, but we want it in a, in a certain atmosphere or a certain degree maybe. We don't, and we want to keep it as comfortable as possible. And we want it as soothing to you as we possibly can, except for when it comes to hindering the Spirit of God. We don't want it too cold or too hot. We don't want your seat to be too soft or too hard. We don't want it to be too long or too short, too loud or too quiet. But there are certain things we do within the mechanism of the church service itself that we try to keep it comfortable for you. We have several people that is very hard of hearing and there's times that it may get a little discomfort to some, but for others, they're hearing things they've never heard before. They're getting to hear the whole entire word of God. And there's times that we come in and seemingly that it seems like we just can't get done at 12 o'clock. I sometimes marvel at the moving of the Spirit of God, and I get as carried away in it as you do. I, I get just as carried away as you do. I, 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 when I come to myself most of the time, I don't realize where I'm at or what I've done. And I get home, and I have to ask my lady, I said, what did I do? Because I just literally did not know. But it's the moving of the Spirit of God, and sometimes it's not church on demand. We can't have it exactly like we want to because God's in control, and we want him to have control. And for a little bit tonight, I'm going to sound kind of like a throwback to a dark age. Uh, the Scripture says, I think it was in the book of Jeremiah, chapter, about chapter number six, somewhere there, that he talks about seeking the old paths. And he said, when you find those old paths, he said, in those old paths, you will find life and you'll find strength. Now, I don't, I, I, I like niceties and I like modern conveniences. I, I don't want to get out and get in the mule and wagon and leave here and go to the house. I, I like air conditioning and heat. And I like power steering, and I like a good sounding V8 under the hood. I like all those things. I, you know, most mule and wagons are driven by two horses. When I leave here tonight, I'm going to call in my truck, and it's got 385 horses under the hood. And I, but I like those conveniences, and I, I love that. I like that, and I appreciate that. But when it comes to what God has done and what he has yet to do, I think there's a lot we can learn from days gone by. I don't come in this pulpit ever that I don't look across the hallway and I look at the first 50 years that this church was established. I look at Sister Cobb, and I mentioned this before, and chills run over me just looking at her. I... I believe she was a holiness woman, but she just looked mean. And I believe she could growl the devil out of you. And I look at Dad McGraw. And I look at them preachers before me and pastors before me. And most of the time, I'll run my hand down it 
getting a high five from them on the way to the platform. But I, I believe in those old paths. And I believe the church has lost something in it. And that's before we got to the point, and I'm not, we're not preaching tonight, I'm just testifying, but we, we lost it from, from the point of, of somewhere we have medical science, and I, I thank God for medical science and all that kind of stuff, but, but I, I also remember a time, even in my own life, when if I really needed something, I had to pray it down. I tell you what, I shared with you this morning, Sister Wanda Polk went to the hospital on Friday, came back on Friday night, took out a couple shots from the doctor, woke up Saturday morning about 2 o'clock in the morning, and she died. I say this, except for the hospitals that Sister D fixes, I say this, If you're not sick when you go to the hospital, you will be before you leave. I thank God for them, but I I want you to understand there once was a time that I, I remember my dad and my grandfather telling me some things that happened back in those days that it was undeniably God that he worked and he moved and he ministered. We have um, your sister-in-law, Sister Felicia, that I remember a couple of years ago walking into a hospital room in Panama City and her body had swollen almost unrecognizable and the doctors was telling us she wasn't going to live. And then the doctors gave us an account of how he had to take a baby, and with his fingers, he had to do heart depressions on the baby, and with his other hand, he had to do heart depressions on the mother just to keep them alive. But last Sunday morning, she was in this house with her baby, and God raised her up. It was God. Thank God that the doctors knew what to do at the moment, but it was God that orchestrated all of that. There'll come a time in your life that as a child of God that you're going to have to face it at a time in your life that the only dependency you can depend on is that what you have in God and nothing else. It's going to happen. But I want to take you back tonight. You love me, Sister White? I want to take you back tonight to a time about 23 years ago. It was in the mid-1990s, about 1993, 1994. We were in a little one-room sanctuary. You could have put everybody on that one road right there, on that one little bit. I think at this time we were actually actually building the, the new sanctuary and the hole was open, I think it was, and we was joining about a 600 or so seat sanctuary and it was Pastor Appreciation Day. I was a pastor and my dad was preaching it that day and I remembered some certain things that took place that happened there It happened one time, it's never happened again. And I I believe things that happened during that time, some things that took place. I'll tell you what, let me, the the video is very um, crude. Um, Back in that day, we didn't have what we have today. The video is very crude. The sound's not the best in the world. But I I, want to take you back and just show you some a little snippet of that service. It's, it's, it's back in the, about 1993, somewhere in there. Just, just watch this with us. I have to take just a minute to say, you know I love you, I wouldn't be up here. <laughs> uh, 
But I think better than anybody else here, I can tell you what kind of pastor that we've got. Because I go home with him every day. I live with him. But do you know what means more than anything else to me is he lives it. 24 hours a day because I live with him. I know. He's concerned. He prays. He seeks God. He's always ready. It doesn't matter what the situation, how crying it gets. He's always ready. Amen. And I love him for that. More than that, he's a fantastic dad and a husband. Yes. And I can tell you that because I live with him and I know it. Amen. Um, a lot of people, their marriages are not all the, that they really want it to be a lot of times. But you know, I can't think of anything that I would change about mine. I've been married to him 22 years. And I love him more today than I ever have. I had some folks come to me about trying to sing, and I've never done this in church before. And you know, this fear comes on you, and I, I, I won't stand here and say it hasn't. But I also, the word comes back to me that we're not supposed to fear. Come on, God will be with us and he'll help us. You got it. I may sound just the worst in the Come world, on. but I'm doing it for the right reason. Amen. Amen. And I want, this song that this morning is entitled The Last Mile Together. And I've never heard it before until Sister Trevor bought it and brought it to me. It has one line in it that I changed. It says, we've been through a lot of bad times. I don't think back and see a whole lot of bad times Amen. in our life. We've been through a lot of sad things. We've had a lot of things come against us, but not bad times. Amen. And y'all just pray for me that I'll... Amen. Come on. Come on. Bless her. Bless her.
I tried my best to talk Pastor Jesse and Jacob out of doing that, but they were so insistent. Uh, but that was a time when, if you look at it today, you look, man, that was just old-fashioned way back there. But let me tell you something, 25 years or 23 years ago, it isn't a long time. It isn't a long time. And, but I will tell you this, the, the God that we saw move back then is still moving today. And, and he's moving, I feel like he's moving, or he has a desire to move even greater now than he did back then. And I, I want to ask Brother Steve. Brother Steve, come on over and join Pastor. Me and him is going to do some talking tonight. And uh, we, we talked a little bit about this several years ago. And, um, um, and I wanted to talk some more about it tonight. But um, I did write down one note that I wanted to make sure I got got right, um, if I can find it, well, um, everybody knows Brother Steve Gardner, and uh, me and him's going to just sit and reminisce a little tonight. And uh, we haven't, uh, we hadn't talked about any format or anything. I just told him to follow my lead and whatever happened, it just happens. But I want to talk to you about, about miracles tonight. And um, I remember I hadn't been at the church very long. And I remember when Brother Ernie Roy got real, real sick and, um, I can remember going into a waiting room and the doctors had more or less, they wasn't giving no good news, but the news that they were giving was kind of bleak to a certain extent. And, and I remember um, myself and my lady and Jack and Mary, and I think, I know Lisa was there and I can't remember who else was there, but um I just, we just got in a room and I said, I want you to take your hands and I literally want you to squeeze death, just, just squeeze it and have faith to squeeze it. And we began to just squeeze and pray. And uh, I believe Brother Ernie's here tonight and he looks just as fat and sassy as everything. And uh, we began to squeeze death. And I can remember waking up the next morning and my hand was pure, it was sore. Cause I we had we had squeezed so hard, and um, and and God gave us a miracle that day, and and in this in this uh, church on demand atmosphere, a lot of times we overlook what God has done and the way that God has moved and the way and the way that He has ministered and the way that He has touched. Um, Sister Jill, where are you at? Uh, you got a baby. Can you can you put that baby down and then come see me for a minute? Um, this, um, I hadn't told you about this either, but uh, I need you to read something for me. And this is a report that was handed to me this morning on uh, Sister Jessie May Y. Allen. What's the Y stand for? Okay. On, on Sister Allen, and um, it was it was given to me um, this morning, and um, ab about I think it was she was diagnosed around August of 2016 uh, with cancer, and um, uh, and things started happening, and God started uh, moving and leading and directing us, and I can still remember the day that I got up from the altar. And the Lord had me go to their house, and I said, Sister Jesse, if, um, if I have any influence with your 
you and your husband, I want to ask you to go to Pensacola Hospital instead of Crestview. They had, had it set up that they were going to Crestview. And um, I said, the Lord uh, told me that for me not to be worried about the cancer, but it's your heart that we need to be concerned about. And, and time told that to be true. Uh, it was your heart that, that we needed to be concerned about. And um, the, the chemo, chemo uh, that she had been taking uh, was making her real, real sick. And, um, uh, but we, uh, I said, don't worry about the cancer no more. And um, so they brought me this today, and it was given to them. And um, uh, Sister Jill, all this here medical stuff, I can't get it. Uh, would you just kind of read in the findings right there and, um, uh, and just tell that, just read what it says. Okay, this is from a PET scan, CT scan. And it said, the findings are the superficial and deep cervical soft tissues demonstrate no abnormal hypermetabolic FDG deposition. Her lung fields are clear of any nodules or abnormal affinity. Within the abdomen and pelvis, there's expected excretion within the gastrointestinal and urinary tracts, the liver, adrenal glands, pancreas, spleen, and node-bearing regions demonstrate no abnormal hypermetabolic deposition. Throughout, there's no abnormal osseous, which is bone affinity. It's a negative PET scan, no evidence for any metabolically active neoplasm or cancer at this time. Hallelujah. And yes, amen. Praise God. And when they handed me this this morning, um, I just, when I get a report like this, I always go down and just look for the word no. I, I just, when, every time I see no, and, and, but if I see positive, then I, I get concerned, but I just look for no. And all I could see on this report was no. And, um, and this morning, if, if you were here, we told of, of two miracles that were sitting with us, and uh, she's, one of them is still with us tonight, and, and we just, um, Jenna. And, but, but the way that God does things for us, and the way that he moves and the way that he ministers in this house. And sometimes um, we get to a point to where, you know, you kind of look up and you wonder, well, um, it, it, the heavens it brass, is, is God hearing, is God moving, is God ministering? And um, uh, we live in a time of much spirit and much uh, prophecy fulfillment. In the Old Testament time, it was much prophecy. And, but New Testament time, there is, in, in our time now, there's much fulfillment of that prophecy. Now, everybody, everybody knows our, our brother Frank and our sister Wendy uh, sitting back there. And uh, how many of you love Sister Wendy? Isn't she amazing? And... Uh, uh, there's, there's not a more faithful, loving husband on planet Earth than Mother Frank. And I love him for the way he takes care of Sister Wendy. And uh, I'm looking forward to the day that all of a sudden a, a bolt of God's power is going to hit her right on the top of her head. It's going to flow all the way through her body. Her mind is going to be well. Her physical man's going to be well. And we believe that. We, we believe that that's the kind of God we serve. And uh, I'm looking forward to the day that Dexter says bye to that walker. And uh, uh, we believe in that. And we're not, we're not doubting that one bit. Uh, and I could, I could sit here tonight, as I said earlier, I, I was sitting down, and I just started writing down miracle after miracle after miracle, and I was trying to get dates right and all that right, so I just watered it up and didn't do it at all. Uh, but um, to, tonight, they are miracles among us. And um, 
How many of you are saved, born again on your way to heaven? Every one of you are a miracle. That's the greatest miracle you'll ever see. It's when God takes his red blood, washes a black heart, and makes it white as snow. And I'll probably give you a few more as we go, but this was fresh on my mind because it was given today. And uh, uh, I want to uh, say again, Brother Steve, thank you for setting up here with Pastor tonight and, uh, and, and, and making me look good and sound good and do all that. And just get that close to you and so you can talk into it there. And, um, let's, get, let's get ready to do something here. Uh, about a year and a half ago, um, Brother Steve uh, lost his wife to the grave, and uh, it's been a it's been a tough tough road for Brother Steve. But Susie went home about a year and a half ago, and then not too long long after that, about a year ago, um, his sister Teresa passed and went home. And um, for you that that don't know. Um, Brother Steve has faced uh, many trials and many tests, and um, and Brother Steve, I, I I want you to just 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 give your testimony, and if Pastor Butts in, I'll just butt in. Yeah, about uh, almost six years now. Uh, I walked in, I was sitting over there about where this gentleman is, and it was on a Wednesday night. And uh, I just felt the Spirit of God come over me like, like a flood. And he, he touched me. He touched me deep. And I, I was just so thankful, so thankful that I was able to come here that night because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have never made it. I would have been gone, cause I'd have quit playing music. I had the cancer, and I was just. I just gave up. Gave up, and I didn't have no hope. And I came in, and it was on Wednesday night. We had the youth in here, and I remember uh, that I ran to the arms of the dearest gentleman I could find, and I couldn't see it from the tears, and uh, I gave my life to the Lord right, right over there, and uh, I thought I'd give my life to the Lord before, but uh, I, I, I did, I have, but then it, it was something special, it was something, it stuck, it was something really special about the, the people in the church, and uh, uh, the people that I met when I first came in, uh, Brother Burkhalter uh, gave me this, this, this armband. I hadn't took it off much. Uh, but the way the Spirit of, of God moves in here. And, Pastor, I, I, you saved my life. You did. You know, God. Save me. But through you and your staff and, and welcome me that I knew right in the first week or first hours that, that you was gonna be my pastor. I knew it. And it's just uh now six, over six years has passed. And I've been able to get my music equipment back together. I was able to get my songs back together. I've got to be able to, to, to speak again, to sing again. Whatever they took, whatever they ripped out my throat, and all I, I left it all there in Houston. You know, I, it was <laughs> it was over. Now, 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 Brother Steve, tell us about what kind of cancer you had. How I had a, a melanoma in the top of my mouth, and it's in the soft pattern of my mouth. Uh, it didn't get my vocal cords, uh, but it, it got all everything from, from the top of my mouth 
all the way up into my sinus cavity. So they had to go in there and they just dug a big hole out and just went in there and they took it out. And, and as they, they took it, she took it back to the back and was testing it, make sure she got all the cancer and got everything out. And, uh, and I, I was on the table for 14 hours. 14 hours that my wife was sitting there didn't know if her husband was going to come back. Uh, but I did. I did, and I, I just thank God for it. Uh, and I just can't say enough about how much that you you can't abuse your body and expect to live very long. And I was a hard liver. I, I played lit for a living, put music for many years, went to, to Nashville and thought it was going to be a star, but I'm a star in Christ. Amen. I'm a star in Christ, and he is safe. I'm just so thankful. What, what, um, everything you have in your mouth now, um, if you took all that out, would we be able to? No. No, I don't think you can understand a word I say. Okay. I don't think you would. I don't think you understand me. Wow. Not one bit. Now don't raise your hand if you can understand what I'm talking about. Well, not a third. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can understand me. Yeah. And and how long have you been like this? Uh since uh, uh two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. Okay. Uh, I had my surgery in two thousand and ten. Okay. Put everything back in there and talk to us again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, um, and I know, um, Brother Steve, it was, a, it was a hard time for you. And just, just so that you'll know, it's a, it's a, constant, it's a constant prayer for Steve. Um, I mean, you you sat and he's sitting here tonight, but two days ago, he was at Sacred Heart, and uh, they were running things down his stomach, and he has a very large ulcer in his stomach right now, and it's bleeding, it's bleeding, but hold my hand, Steve. I say unto thee. As I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted in thy own blood. And I say unto thee, live. Yea, I say live. And that's the word of God. That's, that's, not, that's not man's word, but that's, that's the word of God. And, and there in his stomach here is a, uh, he's, the doctors told us that the only time they seen a ulcer bigger than that was on the operating table in the hospital. He should not even be here tonight. He should not be sitting here where he's at tonight. But it's it's the the blessings of God that he's able to sit here and and I can tell you every time something like this happens with him, fear will come on you. And that's that's what my lady was talking about. Earlier, she said, but, this, you know, God said he had not given us a spirit of fear. But uh, there's always a f flesh will always fear that the cancer is coming back or whatever the case may be. But we, um, we, we openly thank God for an ulcer, and we speak the word of God over that ulcer, and we command it to stop bleeding. And Brother Steve, be well. And, uh, but, um, but the, um, Brother Steve, do you have any more family? Do you? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I have a sister. Okay, you have, I have a sister. sister that's, okay. uh, that lives at home. Uh, okay. Well, she lives in her home. Okay. They live in the same uh, piece of land. There, okay. The Blackwater. Okay. Okay. Well, Jesse, this thing keeps falling on him here. You may oh, have I saw that. You got it? Okay. Got it. Um, and, um, but, um, you know, for, for some people, 
to come to the house of God and, and feel God's spirit and feel God's moving of his spirit, it's an option. It's, it's an option that, that they come. But uh, for Steve, it's a necessity. He has to not only feel the spirit of God, yes. but he has to have your fellowship. That's right. He has to have your love and your fellowship. And I, I think that's, that's what's so important about, about this house is uh, your love that you, that you give one to the other. And um, I remember uh, a few uh, months ago, um, we went and uh, we bought you a brand new amp. Uh, we got you a brand new amp over there, yeah. and um, you what you're you're an amazing guitarist. You're just uh, you're an amazing like, um, guitarist, and um, uh, and I um, uh, I did go back and uh, I, I'm, I'm working on some stuff. But uh, the guy down at the guitar place told me that. There was a certain kind of guitar. He, they know you down there. You know they know you down there. They they, they know you. Yeah yeah they 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 know you and um, and they was telling me of a certain guitar that you wanted and uh, uh, we'll we'll save our pennies up. Uh, you like pastor. You got real good taste. Uh, and uh, uh, but uh, but uh, but we uh, we just. Uh, we're, th- we're thankful for you, and um, and and brother Steve, we we're going to take this little thing we're doing tonight, and we're going to send it all over the world. We're gonna we're going to um, uh, we're going to it's being recorded, and we're gonna it's on it's on Facebook Live right now, and but we're gonna send this all over the world. But I want you to just look in, at this congregation, and I want you to talk just to a minute to our maybe our youth maybe we got some youth uh that's listening that they're having uh, some problems with alcohol or drugs or and and i know i through our time of counsel i know that um alcohol had a grip on you and uh cigarettes had a grip on yes. you tobacco and yes, uh and and a lot of that is where you find yourself tonight like yes. you said a while ago you abused your own body but why don't you just speak to to us a little bit about that? Well, like I told you, I was uh, uh, lived hard, uh, alcoholic, uh, and uh, I uh, cigarettes. Cigarettes is uh, is a killer. I see it take so many people and just drain them. And you see it all over them. They just turn gray, and they just their, their their life is just sucked out of their body. And I'll tell you a quick thing. Uh, my cousin died of COPD at the age of 56. And the day he died, I remember sitting on his front porch, and I looked at him through the mirror, and I could just see a silhouette of him coughing and the oxygen in his in there. I could see a silhouette. Oh, the most nasty 305, too, you know. Good, you know, it ain't nothing good about none of them, believe me. But, you know, he wouldn't even buy a pack of red. Yeah, well, it's nasty, fella. I, I, I smoke Marlboro. Like right, that. I was say he couldn't even wouldn't get a Marlboro. Uh, but anyway, he, he sat there and he died. He, he killed himself. I said, and I remember the day he got his uh, his diagnosis. He said, well, I'll be dead four years if I don't quit smoking. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. I said, why don't you stop? You stop now, you'll be okay. You know, live a little while longer. But he left three kids behind. He left a, a, a beautiful wife behind that he loved. And now, you know, he's, I think about him and uh, me and he play guitar together. Uh, we grew up playing music. Uh, back when I was very young, I remember going to his house uh, at age 12 playing the guitar. And I and I guess that's the way I learned how to play a lead, you know, because he played rhythm, and I picked the lead behind him, you know. And we wrote a bunch of songs, but maybe not another day. But 
Yeah, he, and, but young folks do not pick up a cigarette. you right about age, you know, about 10, 8. I started smoking when I was about 8. And I am uh, almost 60. So uh, you just cannot do it. You just, young folks, because you're going to be in the parking lot, you're going to be riding home with somebody. They're going they to fire a cigarette up, and you're going to think, that's cool. Let me have a half of up, and you'll choke, and you'll scoff. And then 56 years later, uh, you're, you're dead with a cigarette in your hand. Uh, so, uh, and alcohol is just as bad, worse. So stay away from it. Don't, don't, don't give yourself a... Uh, a devil uh, uh, a foothold in your life because he's going to figure out a way to get you. And peer pressure is is most of it, you know. Well, I don't want to smoke because my friend spoke. You know, I want to drink because my friend, you know, and it goes that way with pornography. It goes that way with uh, eating, gossip, uh, on and on. You know, it's just as bad, uh, all of it. So don't do it. Just say no. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And uh, um, I, 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 I don't want to ha- uh, have what you have, but, boy, if, if maybe you could ask your doc- doctor if he could give me something to put in my mouth to make me sound as good as you do. That. <laughs> Well, that, that would I be great. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, uh, but, uh, but uh, Brother Steve is, uh, is an amazing light, um, and not only to our church and our church family, but he's a light to the outside in community. And um, I, I have prayed for him so many times as I've watched him get out of this truck tried to get his legs to work just so he could walk in here and walk up on this platform and do for the Lord what he does. And that's why I I, I hound him about eating. I want you to eat. I want you to eat greasy stuff. I mean, stuff is fattening and stuff that, you know, that's just, just, just French fries and hamburgers and ribs and just... Homemade biscuits, you know, just anything you can grab a hold of. You just keep eating, and uh, and God's going to keep uh, keep giving you strength. I want to ask the fellows if they had come around. Uh, oh, we're going to sing "Sometime I Cry," and um, are you want to sing "Amazing Grace" first? Uh, it, it don't matter to me. Uh, I'll, I'll do either one of them. Okay. Well, let's let's just do "Amazing Grace," and then they can all come over here and right. get with us. Uh, <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, oh, oh. 
how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Guys, get around with your guitars. Get another. Hey, Jesse. Jesse, get another stand. This thing here is acting like a. Well, uh, what it is, I got, I got the weight up here on the front. Yeah, well, we fitting to get something. Ain't got no weight in it. I can fix it. Yeah, yeah. Use, use this. Use this in my head. Okay. Yeah, this, that, that thing there is. There's a dumpster back there. We can put that in. Uh, um. Brother Steve, you told me that um, you, t you told me that uh, you had kind of a, a rough day. Um, was it today? Yes, sir. Well, in the bathroom, there. right as soon as you started preaching, I was. A lot of people has a rough day when I start preaching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean for it to sound like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was about that time. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so you just um, you just you just started missing Susie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did. Uh, it was just me and Michael in the bathroom, and I I just I just just broke down. Uh, maybe I can tell you. But you know, uh, the last time I held my wife's hand. Uh, it was cold. Her hand was cold. And uh, I just, I wish I hadn't have, hadn't have done that because uh, they were going to try to put anything in your mind to think that uh, you had something to do with that. And he didn't. But I remember I reached out and I picked up her hand and it was cold. And I, I saw the last, I saw her pull her last breath. I was trying to give her CPR and, uh, and be on the phone. And, and, uh, miss, but she went peaceful. She did. She went peaceful. And uh, it, every now and then I, I get about with it. I really do. And, you know, and then, but, you know, sometimes I do cry when I, uh, I sit at home by myself and, Think about the, her in the old days, and, and uh, it uh, it was it's been it's been a battle. And uh, my sister Teresa, you know, she she went right. She went way too young, fifty six, uh, and she just way too young. She went about the same time as Mitchell did, and it was it's just a time of my life to where I really needed God and I really needed the church to be. With me. And y'all have been. I mean, I, I don't, it ain't a day that I don't walk in that door and I don't have 15, 20 people hugging my neck. And it, it, it gives me strength. It does. It gives me strength. Uh, I've had a bad day. You know, uh, we, all gonna gonna, we all have bad days. We all have bad days. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, you know, Sister Wanda experiences that. And, yes, uh, I know she Sister does. Lisa Miller is experiencing that. Yes, and, and anybody that has ever, ever um, lost someone has experienced that, that they love. And I want to I tell you, Steve, you, you, you're amazing to me because 
you're, God, God knows that you're a greater man than Pastor is because I couldn't make it without my lady. And uh, so God is giving you strength, and he's giving you power to get through that. And uh, I remember something, and I've said it here before, but I remember something my Carly told me one day. We were riding down the road, and I was, we had lost someone. And um, when we lose someone in our church body, I just, uh, it's, it's hard on pastor. And, uh, and I was riding down the road, and we were talking about some things and started talking about uh, Scott, which is her other granddad that's done gone home to be with God. And he was like a, like a son to me. I, um, I, I prepared his body. Um, I wouldn't let the nurses did it. I washed his body. And uh, we were talking about some things. And all of a sudden, she saw tears dripping off my my chin, and I still remember her. This this happened about a year ago or so, and she reached over and hugged me, and she said, that's okay, Papa. It takes a real man to cry, yes. and uh, so I've, I've, I've never forgotten that, so d- don't worry about crying. Just let it go, and let, let cry and do, do whatever you need to do, and uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, y'all listen to Brother Steve and the boys sing, uh, Sometimes I Cry. I looked upon Blending with the church crowd I know the routine Like a list of Bible studies in town Watch Christian TV Know all the preachers Born again, without a doubt, I know that I'm saved. But sometimes I hurt, sometimes I cry, times I can't get it right, no matter how hard. Sometimes I fall down, stumble over my own disguise. I'm running wrong all the time. There's still no doubt for me. If I just speak faith. Worship and praise and let everybody know just where I stand. On the back of my ride, it's reaching across for the whole world to see. I know God is good all of the time, there's no doubt for me. Sometimes I hurt Sometimes I cry Sometimes I can't get it right No matter how hard I seek to try Sometimes I fall down Stumble over by the sky I lose strong, the whole world lose all. Sometimes, Lord, I cry. Sometimes I hurt. Oh, sometimes I cry. Sometimes I can't get it right. No matter how hard. Strong, the whole world looks on. 
times the old I cry Try to look strong Old world lose strong Times the Lord I cry Try to look strong Old world lose strong Sometimes Lord, I cry. Brother Steve Gardner. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, David Jesus. see you sit there. If you would just stretch your hand this way. Hallelujah. Brother Scott, if you would come up. Brother Brian, come on up. Brother Hornsby, come up here. Brother Bobby, are you here? Is she here? I believe that <laughs> I believe the Lord's going to honor our prayer. I'm going to keep him with us. I'm going to defeat everything that comes against his life. And I'll say again, the fact that he's just here tonight and he's done what he's done and said what he said and sung what he sung is nothing but a miracle. And um, all the doctors could have wrote him off a long time ago. And I and I want to say this. Maybe, maybe there's somebody listening tonight and um, maybe you're battling cancer or maybe you've lost a husband or a wife Maybe you having a battle with alcohol or addiction. Maybe maybe things is going on with you that you just you just really need God to come and give you strength, give you hope, and give you reassurance, healing, deliverance, whatever the case may be. But uh, it's not it's not church on demand or God on demand. What will move God towards us? I said it this morning. I'll say it again. Is righteousness within our life. And our need doesn't necessarily move God at times because God knows what we have need of. The Scripture says even before we ask it, God knows that. But what will move God is our faith. And, and sometimes... In our walk with the Lord, we do get weak. And in that time is when, in the weakness of that, is when we need people to stand in the gap and make up the hedge that God would still move and God would still minister and God would still meet the need. Let me tell you how the enemy works with me. Every time I brag, about what God has done, Jesse. Every time I brag, there's always an attack that comes, always. But I know God and Steve is strong enough to withstand the attack. And and Christy, is Christy Brunson here tonight? Where's she at? Is she here? Come here, Christy. Jason, come with her, son. Christy has breast cancer, and we've done had one surgery, and tomorrow, about 
6 or 7 o'clock or so, they're going to go in and have another surgery. And let me tell you, Christy, that the testament is only as good as the testifier. And, and, and understand that the testament is just a testament until it dies. And sometimes we have to let flesh die, and we have to let unbelief die, and we have to let things die that, that God can come and God can move and God can meet our need. And I, I want to do something, and I, I hope it doesn't embarrass anyone, but Steve, I want you to stand if you can. I want you to stand up. Get your legs about you, buddy. We're, we're fixing to lay hands on Steve. And um, as we lay hands on Steve, Steve, I, I want you to lay hands on Christy. And I want you to be praying for her, that God's just going to be with her. She's, she's scared, and it's only natural. You know what it is to be scared, and you know what it is to have the feeling of uncertainty. And, but, but I know we serve a God of miracles, and I, I could, I've got many of you. I one one of the most beautiful testimonies I ever read was the testimony that Brother Jimmy DeBose wrote about a man that went in his room one night. And I still have that. And when my faith needs increasing, I pull out that testimony and I read that testimony. I could, I could go down every row inside of this house tonight. Sister Sarah, I mean, uh, uh, Brother Jesse's mom. I could, we could go down row after row after row of people in this house tonight that has a, testi- a testimony that God has, has moved in your life but that testament had to die. We have to die to flesh, and we have to die to certain things that we hear and feel and see. And, and, and tonight, I know that God is a God of miracles. Jason, you hear me? I'm telling you, we serve a God of miracles. And... Christy, you shall live and you shall not die. You, the scripture says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and I, you shall live and you shall not die. Jason would be a mess without you. And you got to be well. And you got to be well. And brethren, I want us to lay hands on Steve. I want to ask my lady to come. And uh, the one that can sing so good. And uh, that's a miracle, y'all. She's never sung before in church, and she had never sung since then. But one day she's going to do it again because if she don't, I'm going to keep playing that video. Yeah. And, uh, but, but guys, we're going to lay hand on Steve. Steve, don't be afraid. Just walk over. I want you to just take her by the hand. And we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name above every name, in the name of Jesus, God is men and women of faith. God, we lay hands upon the sick and we shall see them recover. God, you're greater than any disease, Lord. God, you're greater than anything that comes against our life. Father, we know by your stripes we are made whole. And tonight, Lord, I ask you to touch Brother Steve's body. 
God, let there be an impartation of what has kept him. God, let it flow into Christy tonight. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that your power will come. God, I curse these diseases in your name. I curse them from their very root. And God, I pray, God, that you will give us a miracle in both of their bodies. God, keep them alive, Lord. Keep them well. God, keep them disease-free. Lord, I ask you, Jesus, to do this work. God, we will give you the praise. We will give you the glory. God, let the righteousness of you be seen in their life. God, let it be the stability of their life. God, I ask you to heal them. I ask you to bless them. God, I ask you to set them apart as a testimony of how great a God you really are. And Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hugger, Steve. Hugger, hugger, hugger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes I hurt. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I can't get it right. No matter how hard I seem to try. Sometimes I fall down. Stumble. God, I try to look strong, the whole world looks on, sometimes the Lord I cry, sometimes I hurt, sometimes I cry, sometimes I can't get it right, no matter how hard I seem to try. Sometimes I fall down, stumble over my own sky. I try to look strong, as the whole world looks on. Sometimes alone I cry. I try to look strong, as the whole world looks on. Sometimes alone I cry. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. God, we thank you for the way that you have touched our lives, the way you've led us, the way you've kept us, the way you held us. God, we thank you tonight for moving in this service. And God, we pray that you will take what was done here, take the same anointing, the same power. And God, we pray that it will touch a lot that are out, not only in this congregation, but beyond the four walls of this church. Lord, there's so many more we could have told, so much more we could have said. God, your ways are unsearchable and they're magnificent, Lord. And we thank you for all that you do. And we give you praise for what you are yet to do. And we glorify your name and we lift your name high. And we thank you for everything that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we are thankful. And in Jesus' name we ask that you continue to do your miraculous working power within our midst. And we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. Turn around, shake a hand, hug a neck. Tell somebody it was great to be in the house of God with them.